It was a blistering day in Bruges as we pedaled our bikes along the highway, ironic red poppies lining the ditch, marking the way. If you ever make it to Bruges, my father had said as an afterthought, maybe you want to go to my brother's grave. His eldest brother Gordon had been taken down on this land just three weeks before he was due to come home, one more added to the tally of the Second World War. Just three weeks later, three weeks, and he would have been home. Another brother, 15-year-old Stan, was heading out to work the harvest across the province and would not be back for weeks, leaving his widowed mother, five brothers, and one sister behind. Bringing home enough money to sustain them through the winter, such was life in Abbey, Saskatchewan, for a 15-year-old boy. Just 15 when his horses and buggy started down the road and he saw the black, shiny car heading his way. The early fall dust cloud pushing it closer to his mother's home, his mother's heart. Just 15 when he paused, when he pulled over and let the car pass. Just 15 when he gave the reins a mighty shake and did not turn around, could not turn around, could not face his mother's shattered cries. Just 15 when he continued on and away, returning only after the harvest was done, the patient pain waiting for him when he returned. But then there was the letter from Gordon, arriving two weeks after the black car, dropping into the bleak house. The letter to his family, brimming with hope, a see you soon sign off with promises of Thanksgiving dinner to be shared. See you soon, the timing all wrong with the black car ruining it all long before that letter arrived. Maybe you want to go to his grave, my dad had suggested, not one for making emotional requests, as if it was a favorite museum or painting I should check out, as he had never had the chance to go himself had never made it to Bruges on a hot summer's day to touch the headstone of his big brother, so he knew that it was all real, that Gordon would never return home. Now more than half a century later, as we rounded the corner, I saw in a manicured, vast field of identical headstones, one after another, with a carved maple leaf, each one bearing the name of the body beneath it. 18, 21, 19, 24, row upon row upon row. We entered. I dropped my bike, a quiet cloud enveloping me as I began to search for my last name among the hundreds of rows of soldiers. Here, said my fiancé, here he is. Gordon Peterson. And just like that, here he was amid the graves so meticulously kept graves each one cared for but for whom for a mother who would never stand at her son's grave and weep for the family who would never drop flowers would never linger at their boy's headstone in their tiny prairie graveyard but so lovingly cared for this small gesture carried out for decades this instead of sending the soldiers home Just this instead of sending the eldest son home, three weeks later, intact and alive so that my dad could look up at him and watch him shave or shoot a puck across a frozen Saskatchewan lake. This uncle, whom I had never met, never tossed me on his knee as he had his younger brothers and one lone sister. This uncle, my uncle, now me, alone with him, this young man of 26, halfway around the world, surrounded by the love of strangers, strangers who care for his headstone, brush leaves from his name, plant small bushes identical to his Canadian neighbor, so they all look the same, so very Canadian, halfway around the world, so very together and alone. I am here alone with Gordon, laden with the grief of eight siblings and one mother that I carry here, that I may rest here today with him. Unprepared for this thick immersion of family loss, the thousand moments never realized, but worse, the thickest, darkest moments denied by distance and time. Maybe you could go see him, my father was saying. Maybe you can give some shape and form to our invisible grief. Maybe you can tell him we were still waiting for you. They said you were gone, but we were still waiting because your letter, your 
letter said you were on your way home. I am here today, Gordon, and I am so sorry that so many may have forgotten you. I see here today that now you belong to others, others who care for you and your thousands of war-torn brothers every day. While in Canada we mark your passing with an extra day of shopping or a game on TV, a chance to sleep in, a few plastic poppies, always vowing to never forget, but that chance to sleep in and make a trip to Walmart is just too tempting, and so we do. And the best I can do is give you a proper goodbye from your family here, today, a half a world away, and feel so blessed that I come from such tenacious stock, the same stock as a boy who knew the best way to honor you was to press on, be strong, and to work the harvest.